On today's episode of Learn to Swim with Me, you will learn how to front float. We will cover the biggest misconception that prevents brand new swimmers from actually being able to front float. We'll then take you step by step through our entire front floating progression. We then will cover the three biggest mistakes that new swimmers make when learning how to front float so that you can avoid making those mistakes. And finally, we'll answer the three most common questions that most new swimmers have when going through the front floating process. You guys ready to get started? Let's begin. In order to learn how to front float, we first have to know what the definition of a perfect front float is. And this is the misconception that I mentioned in our introduction. And it's the area of learning how to front float that most brand new swimmers get wrong. Because we believe, or we've been told, or we've been taught by the swim industry that everyone has to front float like this. You see, most of us believe that a perfect front flow only exists when both our arms and feet are at the top of the water, but nothing could be further from the truth. The reality is that most of us really aren't able to achieve that. You see, achieving your perfect front flow comes down to your unique body composition. Let me cover a few examples for you to paint the picture. Some of you might have extremely muscular legs and muscle is more dense than water. So if you have very muscular legs, your front float might look like this. Now notice in that example that my arms were on top of the water, but my legs were not able to make it all the way to the top, which means that if you have very muscular legs, a perfect static front float for you might not be with your legs on top of the water. Example number two is if we have a low body fat percentage in our upper body, that static front float will look like this. Notice how my arms were not able to lift up on top of the water, but my legs were. Now, example number three is if we have a low body fat percentage throughout our entire body. And that example looks like this. Notice in that example that neither my arms nor my legs were able to be on top of the water. But if that describes you, a low body fat percentage throughout your entire body, that is your perfect front flow. And I hope that by reviewing each one of these examples, we can relieve ourselves of the notion that we have to create a perfect front flow. And that perfect front flow only is perfect if both our arms and legs are on top of the water. Nothing could be further from the truth. So how do you achieve your perfect front flow? Let's review the top three things that you must do in order to achieve your perfect front flow. Step number one, and by far the most important step, is that you are 100% relaxed when going into this movement. Anytime that we carry tension in our body, our muscles become more dense and we end up sinking in the water. To help ensure you do not bring unaddressed fear into the water, I want you to follow two quick steps. Number one, go back and watch Learn to Swim With Me episode one. We cover that entire process. And number two, check out our free adult Learn to Swim community. More information can be found in the link in the description below. Step number two to finding your natural and perfect front float is ensuring you take a proper deep breath. And a deep breath is not, <gasps> which is how most of us end up taking a deep breath. That's good, but what's even better is learning how to take a deeper diaphragmatic breath. First, by expanding our stomach, pulling the air up into our chest, one final breath, and this process 
actually increases the amount of air that gets in our lungs by about 30%. And more air in our lungs means we are more buoyant in the water. So this is especially important for you if you've been told in the past that you are a natural born sinker. Just learn how to take a deeper breath. And step number three, I don't want you to try to force or create the result. I just want you to relax into it. And now that we've talked about the three most important factors that'll help you find your perfect front float, let's go into the process so that you can actually find that perfect front float. Step number one of our front floating progression is finding a space on a wall. We will use the wall as a safety point, which will allow us to relax into this movement more. So what I would like you to do is plant both hands firmly onto the wall, lower yourself down into the water. Then we're gonna slowly walk our feet backwards. We're gonna take a big deep breath and slowly lower our face into the water and try to relax our entire body as we begin the movement. That looks like this. It is very important that we practice this movement on the wall a minimum of 20 times because finding your perfect front float is not going to happen on the first repetition. You see, all of us carry some amount of tension into the water with us. And the more reps that we take, the easier we're able to find our pure state of relaxation in the front floating movement. So I urge you to not move through this process super quickly, but instead take the time, take the number of reps that is necessary so that you can settle into a relaxed front float every time. Remember, front floating is the entire foundation of everything else that comes in your learn to swim journey. So ensuring that we can hit this every time is absolutely essential. Now we will cover the most common mistakes at the end as it relates to all of the front floating movements, but it's at this point, I do wanna talk about some of the things that you can expect to feel or to experience when you're going into this movement for the first time. Most of you, as you are going through your first, let's call it five repetitions, regardless of where your perfect front float will be, will probably not have a lot of what we call lift off with our feet in the movement. Instead, your feet will stick to the bottom of the pool. My goal for you is to feel like your legs are completely relaxed in that movement, even if they're not coming up off of the bottom yet. Step number two of finding your perfect front float is taking us away from the wall and now to a shallow area of the pool. A perfect area is if your pool contains steps because we can start to find our body's natural front float without having to worry about the pool depth. It really helps us psychologically stay completely relaxed. So I'm gonna start on this top step, which is only about six inches of water. But what I want you to do, same process. We're gonna put our hands firmly on the step. We're gonna walk our legs back, take a deep diaphragmatic breath, slowly place our face in the water and allow our body to be fully relaxed. And that looks like this. The reason I love practicing this so much on steps is that we can have our hands on the step and then we can move our hands up off of the step so that we can begin to feel that feeling of floating for the first time. And it's an incredible feeling. I can't wait for you to feel it. When we move our hands up, that is step number three, and that looks like this. Step number three still involves the same step, only I want us to start to let go of that step when you are 100% ready. And this is why the steps are such a great place for us to keep practicing this progression. Because if we feel a little bit of tension or anxiety, or we feel like our mind is getting the best of us and we get scared, then we can just move our hands right back down to grab back onto the step. But it, this allows us to start to feel the feelings of a natural front float or the water carrying us. That looks like this.
Step number four is to move down a step and do that exact same front floating process with a little bit more depth underneath us. And that looks like this. Still bring our hands first down to the step, start to walk our feet backwards, take a deep breath, and when you're ready, when your face is down in the water, start to lift your hands up off of the step. And that looks like this. Step five, I want you to come back to the wall you started on, only instead of having both your hands on top of the wall, they're now gonna have just our fingertips pressing up against the wall. And this will allow us to find our body's natural front float like we talked about earlier, with still having the comfort of facing the wall, okay? And that process looks like this. Keep your fingers up onto the wall. Walk your feet slowly backwards. Take a deep breath. Slowly lower your face into the water. And it goes like this. This point is super important, so make sure you're listening closely. If we start to float backwards during this step in your progression, it is absolutely essential that we don't react to that with force, with fear, with anxiety, that we notice that that's happening, but also realize that we're still safe. We are still practicing this in shallow water and we can just stand up. Many times, brand new swimmers will start to float backwards and have a reaction that they panic. And that reaction can cause setbacks. All right, step number six, we're still gonna face the wall we started on, only instead of having our fingertips on the wall, we're gonna take a big step backwards. But we're still facing this area. This still allows us to feel in control and feel the safety of the wall in front of us. This is hugely important for positive psychology as we're continuing to build our confidence with this movement, all right? So that, step number six, looks like this. Lower yourself down, put both hands out, about shoulder width apart, or maybe a little bit wider. Take a big deep breath, slowly walk your feet back a little bit, and gently lower your face into the water like this. Step number seven of our front floating progression is to turn our body and face open water. And that looks like this. So remember, one arm out, other arm out. A little bit beyond shoulder width apart. Slowly lower yourself down into the water. Take a big deep breath and try to relax into this movement as much as possible so that you can find your body's natural front floating position. For me, that looks like this. And step number eight is just to practice this 20, 50, 100 times. Practice it as much as you need in order to consistently find your body's natural front floating position and to ensure that while you're doing that, you are 100% relaxed. Now, it's at this stage in your front floating learning that I wanna bring your attention to a little nuanced detail that our new swimmers share with us as they're learning how to front float. And that is the difference between maintaining a state of pure relaxation in completely calm water versus finding and maintaining that same state of your relaxation when the water has a little bit more movement, ripple, or a little bit of wave in it. And that is common if it's windy outside, if you're practicing in a public pool that might have other swimmers around. So my advice to you is this, really embrace feeling and movement of the water. Remember that we want to maintain a state of inner relaxation, inner peace, and not react to the external environment. So if you notice that you might begin practicing in calm water and then all of a sudden it becomes rippled <laughs> 
you notice your body start to move as there becomes more ripples or waves, do your best to try not to react to that external experience, but maintain a state of relaxation throughout the entire process. Here are the three most common beginning front floating mistakes. Mistake number one, we mentioned this earlier, but trying to recreate the version of a front float that we see in our head, which for most of us is both our arms and legs on top of the water. Remember, I urge you to go through this process using as many repetitions as is necessary to find your perfect front float. But we have no need when we are statically front floating, or that means not moving during the front float, to have to have our arms and legs on top of the water. What you will see in coming episodes is that as we start to create forward movement in the water, even if our arms or legs are below the surface when we're at a standstill when doing our front float, they will start to rise up in the water as we create that movement. So it's not a thing if your legs and arms are not on top of the water during this portion of your learning. Common mistake number two is forcing our legs up to the top of the water when we're doing our static front float. Remember, you do not bring your legs up in the water. You allow the water to lift your legs up. But when you force your legs up, here's what that tends to look like. What you notice if you're trying to force your legs up to the top of the water is that they immediately sink back down. And then once they touch the bottom, you kick them back up and they immediately sink back down. If this describes your feeling when trying to front float, I urge you to go back through the Caribe swim, learn to swim relaxation process. And you can find that by clicking on the link in our description below and joining our adult free learn to swim community. Learning how to front float requires that we are 100% relaxed at the steps that come before we front float. And if you didn't have a chance to see steps one, two, and three, we covered those in our previous Learn to Swim With Me episode. I'll link to that right here. So I urge you not to make that mistake and ensure you are comfortable holding your breath for a minimum of 20 seconds before even starting any of this front floating process. And now let's cover the three most common questions that we are asked by our students as it relates to learning how to front float. Far and away, most common question that we get asked is, should we blow bubbles when our face is in the water during our front float? And the answer to that is not yet. As we've covered in previous videos, when we blow bubbles, we lose buoyancy or we start sinking in the water. Air in our lungs is a key ingredient to us being able to comfortably find our body's natural front floating position. So at this stage in your learning, I urge you just to comfortably hold that air in our lungs. There will be a time and a place where we do learn how to blow bubbles and we do use that as part of our learning, but this is not that step yet. Common question number two is one of my favorite to be asked, which is what happens when I go into my float? If I'm so buoyant, I have a hard time getting back down. And I love this question, not because I want you to get stuck on top of the water. I promise you that's not it. But it's that most adults when they enter into this process have such a fear of sinking that when they realize how supportive the water is, that also freaks them out. But that is a step in the right direction because during this process, you are feeling the support and the aid that water gives you. And so although this might be a scary experience at first, remember all we have to do is bring our feet underneath us and stand back up because we're practicing this always up front in shallow water. And common question number three is what happens if I'm just a born sinker and I can't float at all? And my promise to you is nothing could be further from the truth. We have to do three things. Number one, ensure we're 100% relaxed. Go through the Caribe swim relaxation process and honor that. Number two, learn how to take a proper deep diaphragmatic breath. Remember, more air in your lungs means more buoyancy in the water. And step number three is practice 
practice, practice the proper technique that we just covered in the prior progression. Once we have done all three of those things, if you are still sinking in the water, then I urge you to join our Learn to Swim community so that I can analyze a video of you and help you with either the technique the relaxation or the air in our breath. Because when we put all three of those together, all of us are born floaters, not born sinkers. Thank you so much for joining me. If you found value in this episode, I ask that you like and subscribe to our channel. If you know anyone that can use this information to help them learn how to swim, please share the video with them. And then if you are still struggling with your learn to swim process, please join us in our free adult learn to swim community so that you can gain support both from us as coaches, but more importantly, from the community of other adults going through this process just like you. Make sure to join us in the next episode as well as we continue to build on this step-by-step -step learn to swim process. We start to include forward movement in the water. It is so exciting. I can't wait to see you all there. Thank you so much.